Hey, this is Ryan Gordon, and I wanted to show you my new project, AL Trace. Now, this first thing I'm going to show you is not AL Trace. This is just a very simple OpenAL program. Um, uh, you see the blue square is our source that's playing sound, and the green square is the listener where you hear it, and you get a nice stereo panning effect, as you would expect. You know, it's a very simple application with the source you can listen to. That. And this song here is The Living Proof by Will Provost. It's our SDL test sound. Now you can see this thing wrote out a file, it says, testposition.altrace, and that's a log file of everything that happened in OpenAL during this. Now that happens because we linked against altrace record, which to the application looks like OpenAL, but it is not OpenAL. It's just a proxy that sits between the application and a real OpenAL implementation. And that looks a little something like this. So when you call source 3 f which is an OpenAL call, it'll write out the function name, you know, the, um, the, the parameters to that function, then it'll call the real OpenAL with that information, then afterwards it'll check for any state changes, write out that record to disk, and move on, return to the, the application. And as far as the application knows, it was talking to OpenAL all this time. Now, once you have that trace file written out, you can dump it out uh, to standard out. Here, let me make this window bigger. So you can see what you uh, called. There you go, and you have you, know, you open the device, you create a context, you set some things up, then all these AL source 3F calls are the blue square moving around, and then the AL listener calls is, is the green square moving around, and then we cleaned up and quit, and that was the end of that. That's the whole trace file. Now we've recorded more information than this, and if you want to see the whole fire hose of information, it looks more like this. Let me find a good example in here. Scroll down a little bit here. Um... Okay, here you go. So here's the thread number that this was called from. Here's the call stack where this uh, call was made. That's the call itself. And here's some source changes that happened because some state changes that happened because of it. Um, it's a lot of information and it's all available at all times, so you don't have to rerun this to figure it out. Uh, but if you do want to rerun it, you can also have this thing push it through OpenAL again, so you can hear what it sounded like when this ran on whatever computer this originally ran on. There we go. It's gonna move the source around, that'll be AL source. There you go, and then we're gonna move that green box around like we did. And that'll be the listener. There we go. Should sound the same, then we clean up and we're done. Okay. Now on top of this we build a GUI to make this more useful than just a dump of information. And it looks like this. You can see your function calls over there. And uh, when you look at the call details, it'll tell you what's in there. We've, we've tried to annotate this so you know what these numbers meant and give helpful things like it's not in bytes, it's, it's, in, uh, it's in bytes, not samples, so it's a common programmer error. We try to help you inform you there. And there's your buffer you played. You can click on this to actually hear it. Yep, still sounds the same. Okay, good. Um, you know, what the source state was at any given time. And you can see these things will update as you move between function calls. You can see what this the state of this source was as time progresses as we made changes to it and you know what the contexts were and the actual ADL device so um, now you might notice over here that all these functions have a bunch of red in them and we we color certain functions red to let you know that there was a problem of some sort these dark red ones tend to mean that it's an inefficient call which is say that you've set this source to the position it was already set to. So it was just wasted work to have set it to the same thing again. So let's go look at our source code for this program. And let's go look at there and oh there look at that. It looks like we made a copy paste error and put the same function call twice. So let's just delete one of those, save it, and recompile that real quick. And run it again. There you go. Uh -huh. This is uh, The Living Proof by Will Provost, by the way. This is SDL's test sound that you're hearing. Now, you'll see that this wrote out to a different uh, file name, so we won't overwrite your old one. See, it's still there. You can still see it if you want. Um, but let's open the new one we just wrote out. There we go. And all the red's gone, because these are no longer inefficient calls. They're actually changing real state. But you'll see down here, some of these functions are in a much more bright red. That's an inefficient call. That's darker red. But this one is a brighter red to say that something actually threw an, an open AL error here. Destroy context failed and close device failed for reasons. Um, that, and that returned false, which is a failure, so we note that too. So let's go look at our thing and see what we did. Oh, we forgot to make the context, the current context, no longer current, which means it wouldn't be allowed to be destroyed. And the AL spec says you throw an error there, and so we report that error to you so you can see. So we'll make sure that function gets added to fix that. Recompile. We're going to run it one more time. 
Here we go. Blah, blah, blah. You've seen this before. That's good enough. Here we go. We wrote out to a new file so we didn't overwrite our old one. Let's go look at what that looks like. And there you go, no more red. And you can see that new function we added in is now in there, fixing the problem. Close device now returns true to say that it succeeded. And everyone's happy with that. So there's one more thing I want to show you. Um, we've added an OpenAL extension that if you run the AL trace recorder, it knows to report this extension, even though the OpenAL itself does not support it. And this extension will let your application annotate the call stream. And let me show you what that looks like. We've already written the, so the code in this program to do it now that I've uncommented it. So we'll just move some stuff around as usual. There we go. Let's go look at what that did. And now you can see that all the introduction code, initial setup, is all pushed into a separate block. So you can see that all these calls are meant to be grouped together. Um, which could be helpful to you know organize your data, and you can also insert messages in here like, oh, uh, the, I just pushed the mouse button there, so make a note so that when I'm looking for what happened, I can say this is definitely where the problem is because I've made a note as to what's going on. And you can also label objects, sources, buffers, devices, and contacts, and give them proper names so that you can find them later on. Instead of looking for buffer number one, you can look for sound effect or source number one. You can see moving source, and then click on that, and it'll take you right to it. And oh, it's got this sound effect. Okay, is it still there? Yep. It's still there. Okay, cool. And you can see the context and such like that has a a name. The device has a name. Um, so that's what I want to show you right now. There's a lot more work we want to do on this, but that's the basic idea. Uh, it's already very useful, already very handy, and we think that you will find this to be useful too if you are an OpenAL developer. So thanks for watching. I hope you check it out. I'll see you next time.